there are some stunning, stunning lakes and, and it's beautiful to just, just to kind of just strip off and get back to nature, you know, and just look up and see the birds and um, let the water just flow over you. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really relaxing and sorts your head out, definitely. <laughs> Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 70 of the show. And I feel like if you're just tuning in now, it's important to say, so Chipper and I, we're a swim run team mm-hmm. based out of Northern California. Our our team name is the Low Tide Boys. That's who we are. Yeah. And it's also our podcast. So in case you're new. Or you've heard all 70 plus episodes. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that the other day. It's like, you know, people's like, why is it called the Low Tide Boys? Well, now you know. Now you know. This week on the show, we're headed back to the UK, North Wales to be exact, to chat with Anna Naylor, the founder of Smock Smock. And if you don't know what Smock Smock is, well, then you're about to get an education. But more on that later in the show. Yes, on to our training update. Now, a few weeks ago, we announced we're going to do away with the training update section, but it's back. It's back. We did our first swimmer practice of the year on Saturday. Celebrate. We had a great time. We went to our usual stomping grounds down in Aquatic Park in San Francisco. We were testing out a bunch of new gear, and the goals of the the swim run was to to bust the rust. Yeah. We did have fun. We didn't tether. We didn't tether. We were testing out a bunch of new stuff. We had the new in you Orza pull buoy. We were testing the Arc Sports Corp wetsuit, the Frank Paddle carbon fiber swim run paddles, all in open water. And if for some reason or you didn't know, we have a whole other show called Gear Talk where yeah. we're gonna where we talk about all this stuff, we review, we talk about early impressions. So it'll appear in the same feed that you're listening now. Yep. And if you want our impressions on what we just tested, you have to listen to Gear Talk. We're not gonna talk about it here. And it's with our friends the Swim Run Labs, yeah. Annie and Brooke. Yeah. So we did six runs, four swims. We were increasing kind of a pyramid up. We went one mile. Uh, run all the way up to three and then back down that pyramid. The swims, we stayed around a static 400 yards or one one uh, buoy length is is what we say. The water was a little bit chilly. It's 56, so that's around 13C for European listeners for the shorter swims. That's just that's just good enough to get started for us, you know. Yeah. we. Have- I think we did pretty well. We, we, con- yeah. we, we discussed that we felt we did pretty good. We There has been times in the past where we have complained more about coldness of water yeah i think but we we kind of yeah just got in there and got after it, i feel definitely was so, cold that first kudos one. to us um so i have something to tell you chipper yes. and this is exclusive for the show so i think i actually might have gotten injured oh no not doing anything slimmer related okay i know i've been working out a ton and okay. all this stuff but i've been really careful of course the way it happens and this is a little bit of a convoluted story but um, I sent Chipper this video of my daughter Rocky, who was playing this game <laughs> where she was essentially trying to kill snakes with this um, Melissa, like a Melissa. What was a Melissa and Doug fajita kit home thing for wow. her little kitchen, right? So it's this big plastic fajita pan, and yeah. she's slapping around. So she's jumping around, just like slapping at stuff, and I'm laying down on the couch, Uh-oh. just so so she takes a bad step, and in, a, in like a total dad move i just like reached out with my arm to catch her before she hit her Mm -hmm. head um and while i did that like i totally pulled like my bicep hurts Uh my elbow my shoulder you got a dad injury i think i got a dad injury (laughs) so i don't know so it's tbd i was pretty sore yesterday i went into total recovery protocol called my pt friends and everything um just Just to see yeah like it just felt really weird like my anyway interesting so i was I hope hopefully everything's okay. Yeah. I was glad it wasn't a, a fajita pan to the head or to something else. That's what I thought it was going to be. Well, we actually had to put the fajita pan away because she got pretty close it to, got pretty to, to, to our son. Yeah, yeah. If anybody really, if anyone wants to see what I'm talking about, just send us a DM and I'll I'll send you the video. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. The 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 whack of fajita video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, we are he has to finish up the training update. Our first race is line of sight, Casco Bay, Odyssey, Casco Bay is coming up about three months away. So we're excited yeah. for that one. Yeah. So we'll be sharing our journey up until there in the training updates. And yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to try to, Make yeah, it a regular our, our schedule thing. is interesting because 
I think we're kind of treating Orcas Island and and Catalina as kind of like the A races, and then Casco is not a race to take lightly. But in terms of the running, it's not that technical. It's mostly that's just like a lot of swimming. Um, whereas yeah. Orcas Island is a lot of climbing. So we'll probably be working on sort of our fitness for a hillier course, which will pay dividends for mm-hmm. Catalina. But also swim run, or sorry, swim volume yeah. to for sufficiently make it through Casco Bay and not be totally shelled. Yeah, and then, you know, we're doing Austin as well, and that'll kind of just be like our last little tune-up before yeah. uh, for Catalina. Looking forward to it, looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Now, on to this week's shout-outs. Yeah, so this week we're going to shout out Everyone that's headed to Boonesboro, Ooh. if you don't know where that is, that's in Maryland, for Swim Run Maryland, which is happening this weekend, the second race of the year here in the U.S. Nice. Um, so kudos to everyone. And then we're giving some bonus shout outs to some really funny team names. So we had uh, the Hurricanes, nice. H-E-R hyphen, Team Amphibilicious, <laughs> pretty good, Big Otter Energy. Please bring me my wine, spelled W H I N E. Love a good pun. Grumpy Squared. So, like a grumpy science team or something. This tethers for strangling. <laughs> wow. Pretty the, aggressive. The Strangler had a swim run team? Pretty, pretty aggressive. Okay. Boy, oh boy, doing this again. And then finally, we put the F in swim. <laughs> spelled S W I N I M R F U N. So swim fun. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, it's just yet another race that uh, we would love to do, but we can't because we're trying to keep our happy marriages happy, and actually have to be out of town for work anyway. So wouldn't be able to go anyway. Yes. So on to this week's feats of endurance. So this week's winner is Ben Kennedy from the UK. UK's getting a lot of hot, little lot, a lot of action. Yeah, they've they've surged in total. Yeah, total downloads. all time downloads. They have yep. Leapfrog Sweden as their the number birthplace two place of swim run. Yeah, so so Swedish folks, Swedes, what? Let's go, people. Yeah. Let's time go. To start listening. Got to got to pump those. These are rookie numbers. We got to get those. Up. <laughs> Says UK. So big congrats to Ben Kennedy from the UK. He. He not only did he post a cool looking swim run workout this past weekend, but it's also extremely British sounding. So kudos to you, Ben. He ran in the Durridge Bay County Park and swam in Lady Burn Lake, which is court- located in North North Northumberland. Northumberland. I mean, uh, anyway, that just sounded like yeah. That's very yes. I that think the Lady Burn British. Lake. Yeah. And I don't know what it yeah. Anyway, Congrats, Ben. If you want to join Ben and win a potentially win a Feats of Endurance Award, head on over to the Low Tide Boys Strava Club. There you'll be inspired, inspired by fellow swim runners as they train for all their swim run events and other endurance type yeah. activities all over the world. Give kudos, receive kudos, chat in the, the Low Tide Boys community, all that good stuff. Head on over there. Yeah. Now, for everyone's favorite intro sh- show music. This week in Swim Run, powered by RaceID.com. All right, we have a couple of updates to share this week. The race reports are flying in from Swim Run Lake James. And if you want to check out a really great one, check check out Team Adorkables race report. Dual that just, race that report. just went up. Yeah, they did a really interesting. So it was written by Amy. And then everything in blue was Trista like chiming in commentary, <laughs> yeah, color commentary, Just like, yeah, the... color commentary around and things. So it's pretty good. We link to it on our show notes. So so check that one out if you want to get a good sense of how that race went for them and how the race was in general. Now we got some good news from our friends at Swim Run Portugal recently that they it looks like everything's going to be a go for their Swim Run t- uh, Tamega powered by Head Swimming. Um, it was was kind of on the fence, but due to the turn for the better in terms of the COVID situation in Portugal. Looks like the race is going to be happening on June 6th. So, you know, if you're able to head out there, you should go. Um, we would. We could. You know. We would be at every race. Yeah, we would. Just take, you Like know. northern Portugal for yeah. the weekend. Be great. Finally, um, you uh, we heard about a really cool swim run that's happening in Ocean City, New Jersey. That's in late July to honor fallen soldiers called the Ocean City Iron Soldiers Swim Run. This event is a 1.5K ocean swim followed by a 4K beach run. And there's no entry fee. Essentially, all the donations go directly to the charity called Philadelphia Treats for Troops. 
Um, so hey, if you're Great in cause, yeah, if you're in uh, New Jersey in late July, go check it out. We go link to it. it in our show notes. So so yeah, take part of that event. That's it for this week. Feel free to email us to, with any tips, swim run news, gear news, any other type of news that you want us to share on the show, and we may. Probably will. Yeah. <laughs> now on to this week's Low Tide Boys updates. So I guess if you were at Swim Run Lake James, you probably saw a Low Tide Boys shirt or a hat around. We were just giddy as schoolgirls with seeing all those photos pour in and, and so full of gratitude and, and, and just wanted to say thanks for everyone doing that. But if you're wondering how do all these people score, how do all these sexy people look even sexier with these Low Tide Boys gear? Well, they went over to the Low Tide Boys store and they picked up some stuff to show off their low tide pride. We have hats, shirts. We have three different shirt styles, two different hat styles to go over there. And if you're looking for new or used swim run gear, but you don't know where to go, you're, you're, you don't want to pay full price for something you might use once, head on over to Facebook and join our swim run swap meet Facebook group where you could buy, sell, or trade your swim run gear. Put a in search of, I need a, a new suit, some shoes. What are you guys looking for? Blah, blah, blah. That's all over there. Now, if you're looking to do something swim related in June, you're in luck because we have joined Envol Coaching's The Big Battle, which happens in June. So if you are wanting to join a team, you can join Team Low Tide Boys. And the goal of this is to do as many swim runs as possible during the month and battle, in quotes, for top honors and prizes. So we put out a what is this, a recruitment video, essentially? Yeah. So, or an ad- so, ad- advertisement? Yeah. Advertisement? Nick, Nicholas asked all the team leaders to make, like, a little welcome video. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we just... We did the Low Tide Boys version of that. Yeah. So, we also have a YouTube channel. So, you can go over there. The video is on there. and Check that out. Just search Low Tide Boys, I guess. Uh, or it'll or be in hair. the show notes. <laughs> or hair. <laughs> Big hair. Big hair. <laughs> so, join our team. Battle with us. We're welcome. Anyone. You just got to pass the vibe check, which is just really being super stoked on swim runs. So yep. you'll probably pass. Now on to this week's interview with Anna from Smuck Smuck. Yeah, so this was a great one. It was really cool to connect with Anna and just kind of get the story of Smuck, like the origin story of mm-hmm. Smock Smock and kind of understand where she was coming at from a perspective of sustainability and protecting the oceans, like right from the start. I thought that was really, yep. was really great. We chatted with her about how she came up with the idea, how why she chose to keep production in the UK rather than outsourcing it, sort of the magical properties of bamboo fiber, and why why she thinks that people are loving her products. We also chatted with her about her connection with two of our favorite people, me and Fanny from Wild Swim Run. And if you, do, if you want to know why they're our favorite people, just check out episode 10 of the podcast. And then finally, we talked about what the future holds for Smock Smock. So it was pretty cool. We're going back to the UK, the land where dry robes, are basically, you know, mandatory equipment, mandatory gear. Mandatory. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I think this one's really cool, and Anna's awesome. It's hard not to root for her. Totally. You know, I think this is this is pretty cool. Absolutely. So now you can cozy up, snuggle in that smock smock. Yeah. Hear the conversation with Anna. <laughs> stoked for our guest today we have anna naylor the founder of smock smock which if you don't know what smock smock is i don't i don't know where you've been but anna <laughs> welcome to the show hi guys how are you we're, we're doing, doing well we're doing great this has been a long time coming we've been big fans of the brand and just everything that smock smock has been doing um and i think we would love to start just by getting to know a little bit about you and, and how, how you came up with the idea to start this company. Okay. Um, it all started sort of about two and a half years ago, and um, we were out on the beach, um, very, very cold beach in sort of February time in Wales, which um, is not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> and... Um, we were out sort of just hanging out and, and uh, my son and my husband were in the water doing a bit of surfing, a bit of kite surfing. And they literally came out and they were blue and shivering. Oh, no. And we'd sort of taken the, um, you know, the ten towels out with us on the beach <laughs> to try and get warm and dry and ended up with them all soggy and wet and horrible on the back seat of the car. 
So I thought, God, there's got to be something out there that, that they can just put on and, and leave on until we get home and instead of trying to sort of stand on one leg and get changed. Um, so I did a bit of research and found that, yeah, there, there are loads and loads and loads out there, but they were all the same. They were all sort of synthetic. They all contained, you know, microfiber fleece. Um, so I thought, well, you know, there's got to be something really to out there that I, that I can do that might be a bit more eco-friendly. Because mm-hmm. I just thought all these big chunky fleeces, you know, you put it on your wet body and then you might hang out for a bit and then you might go back into the water. And the, and the microfibers come off on your skin and then go back into the water. So I thought, right, okay, there's got to be there's got to be an eco solution going on here. So I um, looked into a few fabrics that I could use, and we came up with um, bamboo and organic cotton mix. So yeah, really, really chuffed with it. I mean, bamboo is amazing to work with. It's mm. really um, really absorbent super soft and um naturally insulating as well so um not only do do smocks get you dry after you come out but they also keep you lovely and warm and snug as well so that was it really so let me ask you how long before you had this uh sort of epiphany on the beach and i have a i have a mini question like is there a be is there a ocean beach in the uk any of the uk that is for the faint of heart because it seems like they're all for, for the low tide boys is there seems any like, that it we seems can like approach? They're all cold. um that that's more of a rhetorical question um but i'm just curious how long before you had this epiphany to actually starting the company was it just like a couple months or just years in the making yeah, well, I, I don't. When I get an idea, I kind of just don't hang around. I want to go for it. Sounds and familiar. So I I started researching the uh, the fabric that I could use, how I could get my hands on that, um, and and yeah, it kind of went from there. I did a few designs myself because wow. I want. I started over with the like the, the poncho over your head style because everybody was seen to be doing like a a coat style. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought, no, let's go a bit different with that as well. Um, and that was it, really. I just sort of put a few designs together, found myself um, a, a, a lady that could uh, draw up the actual patterns for me. And that was it. Job done. Let's go for it. So we had a few prototypes made and we tested them out here in freezing cold Wales. And yeah, that was it. I, I, love- I got myself... Love it. So it sounds like you have no previous experience in garments or textiles or anything like that. And you just dove in feet first, or I guess that would be jumping in feet first. You dive in (laughs) with your hands first, (laughs) but you jumped in feet first to it. And here you are with the, the only sustainable, like, um, you know, organic planet friendly post swim hangout coat. It. love it. it why not hey yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lecturer by trade so completely different change of tack <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it's it's funny how life works like that sometimes now i think everyone who's gone for a swim has been in that position where you're trying to hold your towel like pinch it between your arm and your side and not expose yourself to your friends or the rest of the whoever's viewing <laughs> this sort of swim yeah. area so a problem that that nearly everybody has, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like San Francisco, where we go swimming a lot. I think pretty much half the city has seen my butt at this point. That's probably towel, that's towel probably falling. true. Now you are we 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 first got kind of turned on to Smock Smock via Wild Swim Run. Our friend Fanny and Mia at Wild Swim Run, and and you sound like you're a you're an open water swimmer yourself have you ever dabbled in the swim run space before how did you sort of get connected up with wild swim run well they they were um they approached me to see um if i wanted to do a bit of sponsorship with them and they they i mean they are lovely lovely girls um the and, yes and are really really lovely um and i just i loved just what they were doing um they loved what i was doing so we kind of just sort of like hooked up and and chatted for a while and and they were following what i was doing and and obviously vice versa um i don't uh dabble myself in the swim run i i do i do the swimming bit but not the running bit (laughs) so um you're halfway there (laughs) it's totally acceptable 
<laughs> totally acceptable. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So I imagine how, tell us a little bit about, we were just down in, when I say we virtually, we, we, we just chatted a few episodes ago with uh, South End, South, South sea. sea Swim Run and down in Portsmouth. So um, we, we've already, we, we've been to the UK already a few times. So how is the, the open water swim community uh, over in Wales there where you are? Oh, it's just growing massive. Absolutely massive. The whole of the UK has just gone bonkers for it. It does seem that um, way on Instagram, at least, as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's seriously is. And I think being um, being in like sort of national lockdown where we, you know, you're told not to venture out more than sort of five mile radius of your of your house. Mm-hmm. People have, have sort of made their own their own activities and their own fun. And that's definitely meant being outside more. Um, you know, whether it's stand-up paddle boarding or wild swimming or, you know, a bit of surfing or whatever it is, people have, have definitely thought, well, we can't go away anywhere. We can't mm-hmm. go on holiday anywhere abroad. So let's let's find something else that we can do. And I think actually, in a weird sort of way, I think the lockdown's been been quite beneficial to some people because they've, they've had to think outside the box and they've, you know, it has meant that they've, you know, they're doing stuff which has maybe incorporated all their family together, you know, brought sort of friends into the situation and um, definitely been sort of like a, you know, good for mental health and all that type of thing to get out there and, and get in the cold water. So, yeah, I think, I think actually, in a weird, like I say, in a bit of a weird sort of way, it, it has been really, really good um, for, for the community as a whole, but also obviously for, you know, the likes of, people who've started businesses in that area yeah, um, yeah. as well, which is, you know, which is great that you can actually bring a positive out of a horrendous situation that we've all been in. Yeah. And I, I think it's also interesting because, you know, the uh, open water swimming and swimming in the ocean has very deep roots in, in England where, you know, people were doing this back in the, you know, 1900s and stuff. So it's kind of interesting to see how there's been sort of this resurgence mm-hmm. in in that, like people swimming the channel, like everyone thought that was crazy except for for the English and things like that. Yeah. Um, so so in that respect, it's really cool. Now it also looks like there is some competition. Uh, you know, Dry Robe is from the UK. Red's original, I think, is also from the UK. So what is it about the UK that you guys are just the ones that have cornered the market on making these types of garments? Maybe maybe we feel the cold a bit more than you guys. <laughs> well, necessity, I get to, it. To, to be fair, sense. we're we're over in California, so our barometer, our uh, benchmarking for what's cold or not is honestly probably not the most realistic. I mean, if it's dipping into the 50s air temperature, I'm looking for where's my big coat? I got to go cuz the pool and I need the towels and I need the beanies and all this stuff. I I think uh I'm pretty I, I'm personally like very warm blooded. Yeah, I guess I feel like I need I need a look. I can't handle cold very well, but I'm trying to work on that. So I feel so I need as to do a whole, more. Do, do you guys over there sort of um, do you go into the water when it when it is cold when it's kind of like winter time? Yeah, well, I mean, we Chipper's complaining, and in, in, in his defense, he's gotten a lot better. We used to go for swim runs, and it would you know would take like ten, ten it'd be like ten minutes to get ready, and then ten minutes to kind of get the courage Complain. to go into that. <laughs> You know, complaining, complaining about courage. the water before going in. Um, so the water is, it doesn't get lower than I would say, you know, 10 degrees Celsius up here. Um, Gosh, that's boiling. What are you on about? I, I know. I, yeah. Well, you well, know, we it's, would it's wear all a wetsuit in there too, by the way. So. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's people that swim year round um, without a wetsuit up here. Um, I did that for a while, but then yeah. I just, I don't know. I lost, I lost my nerve. I definitely think cold water is is having a moment, if you will, right now, and or at least in the states. I mean, now we have these kind of cold water tanks where people can kind of sit in and be really mindful with your breathing and that sort of stuff. But I feel that everyone in the UK, that's you're probably looking over here in the to the states, like, hey, we've been onto this for years, so you guys are just <laughs> catching on to this trend. Um, would love to hear a little bit about sort of how what you like about about sort of the we call them polar polar bear type swims but the the cold water or the wild swimming as you put it the the polar bear ones are the ones where the where people actually you know put on their 
their big bobble hats and uh, and take their they've got gloves and socks on and all the rest oh, of it yeah. and they they go and then they take their axe with them and actually axe the way through the ice oh, before God. they can go swimming now there's absolutely no way that i would i would even dream about doing that <laughs> Um, we're with you on that uh, one <laughs> just, you know that those guys are, are just uh are just stoic to the end I don't, I don't know how they manage it but they do um and i i have quite a few customers of, of mine who do that as well so um yeah they're, they're they're a crazy bunch those ice swimmers i think um but yeah i mean we've we've got some beautiful um sort of lakes um up in north wales um in like the snowdonia mountain range and there are some stunning stunning lakes and and it's beautiful to just just to kind of just strip off and get back to nature you know Mm -hmm. and just look up and see the birds and um let the water just flow over you and yeah it's uh it's it's really relaxing and sorts your head out definitely and good for you there's a lot of benefits for for cold water swimming now, yeah. now, you know, with COVID and everything, with lockdown, as you mentioned, there was a lot of restrictions on what people could do. Pools were closed in the UK. Um, it, it seems to me it's very hard for you to keep product in stock uh, because of this resurgence in open have, water. Though. Great problem to have. And so, so how, how have you dealt with, I guess, the increased demand for, for Smox Mox? Oh, <laughs> oh it's going that well huh <laughs> all right it's next question biggest, <laughs> it's my biggest nightmare at the moment um i mean it's it is a nightmare and it's not a nightmare when i put something in you know we we do a run and because we make everything in the uk and it's all um you know beautiful fantastic hard-working ladies at sewing machines it's not great big massive mass production, mm-hmm. you know, Chinese style. Um, so it's it's very long winded, um, but it's it's right and the quality's there and everything's checked over by hand and then packed by hand as well. Lovely. So by the time we've done all that and got got smocks made and ready and they're in the store, it's okay. That's two days gone, and we need to start again now. Oh my god! So, wow. yeah, it's it, it, we're just we're just carrying on now. We 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 literally sort of like I I booked factory time, and then once my factory time was up, that was it, and I had to wait for more factory time. But now it's just continuous. So we're just making continuously, um, and kind of like topping up the the most popular ones as as we go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's crazy. What, it really is crazy. What are what are your most popular models? The full zip or the um, poncho? I would say the full zip are the are most popular um, mm-hmm. in teal. Teal, teal with pebble gray. Yeah. And I also, I love the the craftsmanship that I hear that's being put into these with, with being kind of hand done all in the UK. I by mean, humans, that's yeah. By, by, yeah, humans or, and not robots or not, you know, underpaid, severely underpaid people. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just... Great, and and you totally hear how you are enjoying being in nature with your your wild swimming and, and just being out and enjoying it, and how that translates perfectly because you you have such a we can just hear the the appreciation you have for for the planet, and and you translated that perfectly into um, you know it, it sounded like the only way that you could make these was a more eco friendly version of it. That was the only way that that it would work for you is what it sounded like. Oh, absolutely. And this, uh, to me, there was no point in churning out another uh, another version of one of the most What's famous there, brands. Yeah. You know, um, I I didn't want to do that. There's there's, there's no point. There's, there, there, I wouldn't have got anything back from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, the the fact that we you know we we do make in the UK and and um, uh, literally. You know, I know what's in stock and I know when it's being sold and I, I know who my customers are. And I think just having that sort of like organic sort of um, sort of growth, even though it's been quite quick, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hands on and basically Smock Smock is me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't have offices and offices of staff 
um, to, to help out. So, you know, my, my husband and my son help, um, and that's probably about it, um, wow. bar the, the people in the manufacturing and um, the fulfillment centre that I now use to send them out. So, you know, I, I want to keep it really like a, a family business. So, so not only do we have that sort of sustainability, but we have the organic growth and, and, and that family feel about things where, you know, we are part of a community. We're part of that wild swimming and that stand-up paddleboarding community. Um, and I think that's really important. I think that's very important for the brand to, to, to have that kind of ethos about it as well. Um, because I think that that comes through, um, you know, we're not just another, another brand on a, on a peg, you know, we, mm-hmm. we want, we want more than that. We, we want to be, we, we want to continue being more than that. Yeah. I mean, and even, even manufacturing in the UK, I think for the passive listener who doesn't really understand global shipping, if this was made in China, I mean, the, the environmental, carbon, uh, environmental yeah. impact just from putting it on a boat and all this stuff, whatever it takes to get it over. I mean, you're saving just a lot of, uh, you know, carbon credits or whatever you want to call it, um, or reducing your carbon footprint. So, so kudos on that. I mean, and, and I'm assuming that's not the most least expensive method to make, to get these made. Oh gosh, no, 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 not at all. Yeah. It's, uh, if, if I did go over to, to, um, Asia or, or elsewhere and say, look, I want you to do this spec and make it, I'd be probably a millionaire by now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And you could, yeah, totally. And, and I, I, I hear, and I love that the, that the focus kind of on the community. And I think that's why we kind of wanted to talk to you as well, is that we saw this, we're seeing, you know, we've, we've had this swim run podcast for, let's just call it a year and a half now almost. And one thing that really took us by surprise kind of was how the community was so welcoming to us and we're seeing a lot of crossover with kind of the open water wild swimming sort of community and and you're you're getting the same of that so i think there's there was a venn diagram between swim run and open water swimming i think there's a lot oh definitely there's a lot in that middle yeah. area so oh, to- totally yeah yeah totally you know I've, I've got loads of swim run customers and triathlon customers and um and then just the swimming and you know it, there's there is like this venn diagram like you say this this crossover um no it's it's cool the community i think is important um i mean i don't know whether you've noticed or not but my my whole marketing material comes from my community um people love to you know they'll they'll write to me and they'll go anna i just love my smock i've just received it today here's a photo of me in it on the beach this morning so i will use that photograph and i will put that on on the social media um and use that as you know as as real life yeah um you know rather than getting models in and doing all posy posy stuff you know <laughs> what <laughs> there's uh there seems a little point in doing that when i've got real people using the smocks in a real sort of uh environment so you yeah. totally and i and i think open water swimming probably more than anything it's real people that are doing it you know it's not yeah. your uh you know supermodel that's uh jumping Getting into, into the... eight degree water and doing all this stuff it's yeah you have yeah. your own your own marketing team that's just your customers, which is yeah. is the best is the best marketing team because and Chipper saying the that for Chipper you. saying that as a marketing professional. Yeah, so I'm uh, like, first day job. You're, you're in a great you're in a great situation for yourself for sure. Yeah, man, that that that's great. How many how many days a week are you are you getting out there and and getting some swimming in? And I'd I'd love to hear kind of what's a what's a normal wild swim for you, Anna. Not, not as much as I would like at the moment because it is it has been quite busy and quite full on. But at the bottom of of, of the garden where I live, there's um there's a river, and we have um got some boulders sort of uh, stopping the river a little bit, and so we've made our own cold plunge pool out of the river. Oh, so it. that's nice just to go and have a bit of a um a bit of a moment, you know, if you can't get into the, into the actual ocean. Yeah. Just so you go down there, you have, you take some time for yourself. Yeah. Just sit there and, um, and sit in the river. <laughs> like you do. Yeah. 
just freezing, just sitting Sounds there, get good. super cold, get out, put on your smock smock, and you know, that's it, and then go back to work. Go warm up yeah. with some coffee or tea or whatever. So what? Yeah. What, what is? Uh, what's next for for smock smock? Are you just just trying to ride this this current wave of popularity? Are you innovating or any new products out there that we should be? Yeah. Do you want to well, give an exclusive? We've got some, um, we've got some bamboo. I, I call them summer smocks because they haven't got the um, the waterproof bit on the outside. Mm-hmm. They're they're just the bamboo. So yeah, we've got some of those coming on board. Um, nice. Hopefully soon. Um, which are always good just to just to pull on when you know when it's not too cold and windy. Um, and we have got a couple of ideas that are in sort of prototype at the moment, but I don't want to talk about those just yet. That's fair. Fair enough. I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you never know where, what was the bad guy from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Uh, Smugglesworth or something? Wow. I don't. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, I've seen the movie, but I you lost me on that one. Well, it's like yeah, he, he, lost too. he was always, he was always trying to steal. Um, oh, right, and he was know, trying to get a mole on the inside of yeah, he was Willy trying Wonka's to yeah, he was factory. trying to steal the fa- the recipes. For, yes, uh, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Good, this good. Point. Be, have anybody stealing my ideas? Can we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I love the, uh, you know, in, in California, again, it's it's quickly getting Slugworth. up. Slugworth. Slugworth. That's the name. Okay. That was the bad guy in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Great. We got it. Slugworth. <laughs> Slugworth. Anyway, okay. moving on. <laughs> moving. <laughs> when, you know, as soon as the, the sun cracks out here in California, it's 70 degrees before you know it, and, and having one of these uh, rather uh, warm coats on is, is a bit much sometimes. Uh, I do. Uh, it sounds like the little towel, not towel, but the little light, lighter weight, the summer smock, as as you call it, I think is a is a great move um, because yeah. Chris and I, as we're all, we, we do a lot of commuting to the to the lap pool or to our swim runs. And we always are, are try to be courteous and have a towel as not to get all your your water or your whatever body of water you're in on your on your friend's car seat. So we always have the towel situation. But if you could just put over a nice little thing. Sit down. You're perfect. You're ready to go. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Definitely. So those will be those will be soon. They'll be launched within the next couple of weeks. Ooh, nice. We'll be uh, we'll be sure to to have all that goodness linked on linked in the show notes here for us uh, for anyone cool. um, curious about the the summer smock. <laughs> is, is that, that has, the name of it? I think we we maybe unofficially named it the summer smock. <laughs> The big sun coming out from behind or something. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I, we love how you've taken the environmental and the, the more eco-friendly approach. And that has such a close alignment with, with Swim Run and, and Otolo, uh for sure has a huge uh, environmental kind of kind of aspect to it. And, and everyone we've, we've kind of been talking to is has a little bit more of that lens on there. And I think we're going to see in general more products that, have to do with being endurance athletes or outside or being out in nature start shifting more and more of their production to being more eco-friendly is that is that similar mm. to your, your thinking there mm, yeah definitely yeah. and i think people expect it well they don't expect it as a per se but i think um if they're digging and there's that option available then mm. i think they will go with that because um it's it's their way of showing, I suppose, isn't it, that they're doing their bit as well. So people wearing a smock are wearing it with pride because they know that they're not transporting any microfibers into the ocean, mm-hmm. which is cool. Um, you know, I, I that's I like wearing it for that reason because I know I'm doing my little bit to help out. And I think if people can do that by buying a certain brand, um, then it's a feel-good factor as well, isn't it? Oh, totally. And I think, um, you know, from, from our professional lives, I think one thing that, that we've always seen is uh, it's great to be sustainable, but you have to have a really great product. Like if the product isn't great, then sustainability, no one's going to care about sustainability if the product doesn't work yeah. or um, yeah. it's somehow mm-hmm. inferior because at the end of the day, people want things that, that work. And it sounds like you've hit the perfect sort of nexus of f- having a creating a business that's totally in line with your values, but ha- still have it be something that's super high quality that can stand toe to toe with some of these bigger brands. And I think, I mean, for that reason alone, I think, uh, 
I'm a huge fan of Smock Smock just for mm-hmm. being able to Yay! accomplish that. <laughs> and and I'd love to hear a little bit, just out of curiosity, is I know uh, kind of the sustainable, uh, fa- uh, not fabrics, I guess it would be fabrics. You have bamboo, and then I know hemp is making a big uh, play as well, and that's a little bit more of a, of a rougher kind of, I feel like that's more of a, mm-hmm. a workwear type uh you know, fabric, but, but bamboo yeah. seems to be really popular. I, I know they're making uh, like paper towels and, and paper products out of bamboo as well. Cause it's much mm-hmm. more sustainable. Is, is that the, the, the best option out there for, for clothing? Well, it's, it's got so many properties to it because it's got UV protection. It's uh, super absorbent, really, really soft. Um, it's strong and, it's also like naturally antibacterial as well. So wow. I don't know, it's, it's, it's got so many properties that um, when we were looking at it, I didn't realize that it did have these properties, to be yeah. honest. I just thought, oh, yeah, let's let's have a look at this and see see how strong it is. But, you know, when you start digging and when you start testing and you start sort of researching a certain fabric, then all these other things popped up. I was like, oh, cool. This, you know, this bamboo is actually an awesome product. Um, so yeah, that, I mean we'll we'll continue to use this as, as long as we can. Um, I like the fact as well that it's um, you know it doesn't use a lot of water mm-hmm. um, and that it's it can be cultivated and cut down and then it regrows. So it's not sort of you know you're not stripping away like vast areas to 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 grow it. Yeah. Um, and I think you know people are trying to use. Um, recycled uh, polyester or they're trying to use recycled uh, water bottles to make like a waterproof outer as well but to me you've got to know where that's come from Um, and people have got to be aware that there are some companies out there who are making fabric who um, they're actually buying in the plastic water bottles to make the fabric now to me I don't get that um, oh, wow. You know, if if it is actually out of recycled water bottles, then that's fine. Um, great, you know, carry on kind of thing. But um, you know, when 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 things are a bit skewed, just to be called yeah um, eco, then you know, I think that's that's going down the wrong route, really. I yeah. we agree with you on that one. You're it's kind of like you're you're not doing it for the for the right reasons. You're doing it because it's mm-hmm. it's maybe the trendy thing to do right now is to. Have, be be a green company or to have a more more green eco friendly products and mm-hmm. as as with you it sounds your your company was built on that idea of it being green that was the only way to do it for you not oh this is a, a cool trend that's taking off I want to jump on this and tweak my thing a little bit so we can we can say that we're green it's it's really in your yeah. dare I say it's in the fabric of. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's wow. terrible that really is bad uh it was i couldn't help myself though it happens <laughs> it happens but we 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 uh, we love it and i see you have beanies bobbles what what was the term that you used bobble uh, bobble, hats, bobble yeah. hats and they look to be hand crochet yeah, yeah, as well. wow. yeah. yeah there's a lot of products on there like the little donut wood donut things like what's uh tell us about these other products in your in your store okay well we've we um we've we've teamed up with a a, a place in nepal um because we love their ethos as well they they handmade everything for us um and they uh, they sort of they're all communities like little cooperative that have come together and they're all different communities locally together and they come to um, to make everything for us. So we thought that was quite cool because it's sort of sustainable to keep their communities ticking along and um, they, they um, you know, offering them employment kind of thing. Um, so that's cool. They're a really great bunch of guys to work with. Um, and then... The donut clips and the uh, the cleaning <laughs> products slightly off um, <laughs> the ordinary, but um, that's actually my sister's company. She oh, started awesome. her own eco company as well, so she's doing all like homeware and kitchenware and stuff. So I thought I'd give her a helping hand and just um, put a few <laughs> a few on my websites as well. That's very kind of you, and it 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 fits in perfectly with the rest of your 
your site. Yes, it's not you don't swim with these wood donuts, but you it, don't. it fits in with, <laughs> you with everything do. else. <laughs> and you have you have a few different styles here. You have a full zip, you have the kind of poncho pullover style with a kangaroo pouch up front, and then yeah. even a kids version. Yeah. For all we your do. kiddos. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. All the kids, bless them. They they can't get changed, can they, at the moment in in any changing room? So they've they've kind of like missed out on the um on the getting warm and and dry quickly. So mm-hmm. yeah, we've um, we've done some uh, kids version as well, which is uh you know going really well. Nice. And and Amazing. I I do I do I'm curious about the the scrap bag. This is something that I've not <laughs> heard about, but I would love. I feel this is a. I'm I'm reading about it right now, but but let's hear about the scrap bag. Right. Well, when we were cutting out um, all the all the from the patterns, all the outers, um, there was like bits that were quite big that were we couldn't really work out what we could do with it, and the wastage was was really low. So I was like, this is ridiculous. We need to do something here. Mm-hmm. So we kind of just thought, right, well, let's make a bag. And then we thought, well, okay, let's make it for the actual smock. So every smock comes in a scrap bag, big hence scrap bag because it's made out of scraps. Um, and also we thought it would be pretty cool if if people could take them on the beach and maybe use them to um, collect any rubbish or bits of litter around, like empty bottles or what have you, and take it back home with them to put in the recycling. I love it. Um, so great. And, and, you know, you can be with it being sort of like waterproof as well. You can wipe it out and then put your smock back in it afterwards. <laughs> you, you're you just living, you're living and breathing the the eco-friendly yeah, top you're to a, bottom. A, Absolutely love as it. As Bruce Lee or somebody would say, you're you're walking the path, you know. <laughs> talk in the walk and walk in the talk <laughs> yeah something like that yeah something like that awesome well anna it's been really great learning more about smock smock and everything that you're doing to be the leading eco-friendly you know post swim post any outdoor activity cold outdoor activity warm outdoor activity change robe yeah it's been it's been super so if you're if the if this sounds good to you which you know these these get the the low tide boy stamp of approval yeah uh head definitely. on over to smock smock s m o c s m o c dot co uk and there's all the different models what what we've kind of mentioned and talked throughout now it looks like you can uh ship to the all all around the the world it seems oh we do yeah yeah, yeah. Loads and loads of customers in the States, which is lovely. And even our ambassador, um, one of our ambassadors, Sarah Thomas, who did the um, the Channel Swim uh, mm. and broke the record. Wow. She um, She's obviously in the States as well. So, yeah, cool. I love it. That's great. So head on over to smocksmock.co.uk. Sorry, I don't say that one very often. Uh, and, <laughs> and snag yourself one of these. I'm looking at. I'm a sucker for a, a nice bobble beanie. <laughs> so, you know, there might be an order coming through. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Although we don't, it's, it's about to be 100 degrees here in, in like two months. So I don't know how much use I'll get of that. But when it's cold, I'll be digging that I got that. Um, yeah, Anna, any, anything else that you uh, you want to point our listeners to about Smock Smock or yourself? Um, obviously, we'll, we'll link to your Instagram and your website and all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll turn it over to you for any last-minute uh, shout-outs or whatever. Yeah, just, just thank you to you guys, really, for inviting me on. It's been awesome to chat. Um, and, yeah, if any of, uh, of people across the pond, you know, want to – start following us then find us on instagram like you say and facebook and everything that'd be awesome you know if you want to ask me any questions i can always answer any questions at all just message me on there as well um helping with sizing and all that type of thing absolutely no problem um and yeah let's uh let's let's really smash it in the states eh? yeah let's do it sounds good awesome anna thank you so much and we'll see you around okay cheers see you later Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions 
or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. (laughs) Finally, (laughs) you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. Or until run you to cross the, or, the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running. Peace. Peace.